So good morning. Um, thank you for joining my session. Uh, we are not too many, but <laughs> it's 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 fine. Uh, my name is Emanuela Zaimi, and um, here today I represent Boku Project, and I represent on behalf of the whole project consortium. Uh, but I work for the Austrian Association supporting the blind and visually impaired people. I am the head of the project department there, joined recently. Uh, and for me, the visual impairments is is um, is new. Uh, before I used to work uh, for Down syndrome um, and um, autism, but of course, always at the management level and nothing professional uh, about it. So Boku project, um, it's a user-centered scientific project. It's an ongoing project. Uh, it started in April last year. Uh, and it's going to be, uh, it will finish in September next year. Uh, it's about uh, producing, having uh, three service delivery solutions, which are totally co-designed, developed and evaluated with the targeted end users. Uh, and the main um, um, uh, thing about it is that we are looking into uh, solutions uh, for the elderly citizens so, so they can access the cultural heritage and stimulate their well-being. So I need to use this right myself. Yeah, so uh, Austrian Association Supporting the Blind and Visually Impaired People, uh, it's nearly 90 years old organization. Uh, we have 6,400 um, members. Uh, our membership is free and we deliver different services, of course, as well as we uh, raise awareness and we do capacity building, advocacy work. And we have also a business side, which is called Access Austria. I have all the leaflets from my organization. If anybody would be interested, I can give afterwards. Uh, so thank you there. If somebody can keep the time for me and let me know five minutes ahead. Otherwise, I will get... Um, lost and I just did something. Yeah, so uh, in this picture is some of us, uh, colleagues from the um, uh, Boku project um, uh, consortium. We are from Austria, from Portugal, from Italy, um, from Switzerland um, and from Slovenia. Uh, the Boku project has got funding uh, from uh, European Commission, from the AAL program as well as from uh, other um, national funding agencies in each um, a partner country. Uh, the leading uh, partner is the Austrian Institute for Technology. Um, so to state a bit the problem, uh, why there exists the um, um, Boku project, which stands for building active user experience to bring culture to the people. Um, Elderly citizens are often excluded from cultural experiences uh, located inside art-related institutions for reasons such as impairments, um, because they live in institutions, or for health and other mobility uh, limitations. But we believe that elderly citizens are a full part of our changing uh, society and that they deserve the voice uh, their voice to be uh, uh, to be heard in, in their uh, matters. And we uh, believe that the well-being is closely connected to the ability to get heard and share experiences and a strong wish to take part in the cultural life as well. So Boku project aims to um, at creating solutions to improve how elderly citizens, um, including those with vis uh, disabilities, uh, explore and interact with cultural heritage inside and outside museums and monuments via multisensory inclusive technologies that I will introduce you later. Um, so using digital and analog tools at the same time. What are these three solutions, service delivery solutions that I am um, presenting to you today? They are called the bag, the box, and the screen. The bag is about exploring local cultural heritage. The box is about uh, exploring remote cultural heritage. And the screen is about overcoming limited uh, mobility. So to be used when the elderly citizen, actually you'll understand at the end that uh, the solutions can be used by everyone um, in the future. 
Um, and the impact that, as I said, we want to have is about improving the elderly citizens' quality of life, including those uh, with disabilities, uh, to promote their well-being uh, and, you know, to, to have a sustainable uh, engagement with galleries, art exhibitions and museums. So it's about possibilities in going into these art institutions, but we now are providing also the possibility that the museums and art and culture goes um, uh, to the elderly citizens. Um, so in this way, we are trying to remove obstacles uh, in experiencing art and culture. Um, and also we believe that it will have an impact to prevent loneliness and isolation uh, for this target group uh, and to benefit finally uh, their cognitive um, uh, function. And the bag as a service delivery model. Um, so for you to understand, we are in the prototyping phase yet. So we have passed, as I will explain, the co-designing uh, part of this project. And um, uh, we have developed, of course, something and we are prototyping. And as you'll see later, we do iterative evaluation uh, and final validation at the end of the project. The bag has two scenarios. It will come in two shapes. It would be as a transparent backpack acting as a traveling display case. It will be um, it, containing um, um, a replica of a cultural uh, object and it will be exhibited in the museum, um, which is uh, that is exhibited in the museum and is con uh, connected with some multimedia contents such as textual description, audio description, images, videos, uh, and it's connected through a QR code uh, with the goal, uh, so the, the bag as a transparent backpack uh, um, has a goal in providing information about this cultural object. And the backpack, you should imagine it um, as um, somebody like a museum educator or maybe a student of arts who is, um, you know, engaged in an internship or as a volunteer with the with cultural institutions. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. Good to know. <laughs> uh, they 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 are wearing this bag and they are going around. Um, so uh, they are going around the city or around the daycare centers, uh, and people can uh, so the elderly citizens can um, have access in this way. And the other version of the bag will be as a tactile interactive postcard that can be brought by the museum visitors as an accessible souvenir or a gift. The postcard is developed as, in two forms, uh, as a physical tactile postcard with a QR code to access the related audio description, and as a digital tactile postcard made of a digital image and an audio description that is created and accessed using the Philip tablet that you will see um, in a while. While the box, so while the bag is about exploring local cultural heritage. So in your uh, city, let's say, or uh, wherever you live, um, the box is about exploring remotely the cultural heritage. Just imagine Sarah as a uh, 86 years old deaf woman uh, living with her daughter's family near Lisbon. One day, the local daycare centers hosts an activity uh, organized by the museum itself, so by the cultural institutions itself. As part of this activity, Sarah discovers the box, uh, which consists of analog and digital tools that allow people to enjoy art and culture um, on different locations. So um, while introduced to the box, uh, Sarah, uh, under the guidance of this uh, museum expert, uh, uh, has access to uh, uh, read in large print, Prints experiment with taste and scent inspired by the thematic culture content, watch interactive presentations, as well as visit virtually created exhibitions on a, on a tablet. So the, the art may be from another place, but Sarah is exploring and enjoying it uh, where she is. Um, and the box has also two uh, variations. So it has two scenarios as a toolkit for the storytelling and as a toolkit for multi, uh, multi-sensory uh, bless you, multisensory crafting lab. Um, so again, imagine the box as a station that, imagine the box as a station that it will be um, 
maybe uh, inside the museum, but also inside daycare and social and healthcare institutions. So it will be a tool, a service delivery mo uh, model inside an institution and in collaboration with the museum and cultural um, uh, institutions, it can serve um, uh, the, our uh, primary target group. And while the screen, the screen is, uh, as I said, to overcome, um, so, so to reach out to elderly citizens that uh, are really stuck somewhere and they, they have severe mobility problems, but it's a it's a it's a, it's an app, so it can serve everybody. It can serve even even uh, us, or it can be that we buy it as a gift for our parents or for our grandparents. So the screen is a virtual guided tour, uh, but differently uh, from traditional documentaries or virtual museum tours, it will be uh, providing interactive exploration. Um, because it will be live with a museum curator, with a museum guide uh, again. And those um, um, uh, joining uh, this tour will be able to speak uh, among them. So imagine uh, elderly citizens uh, joining this uh, uh, virtual tour, being able to ask questions to the guide and being able also to discuss on that cultural content that they can um, visit there. Um, so these are... Um, the relief is placed okay. into the frame of our multimedia can, station. Can we have louder voice? The built-in projector gives color to the white relief. The user can select different projections, like the original color version, enhanced versions for people with visual impairments, a map of the interactive regions, and many more. A depth camera tracks the user's hands, detects certain gestures, and maps them to regions on the relief. With this, the user can trigger audio information, videos, projections, and even an interactive 3D soundscape. The touched region lights up, the soundscape is reduced to the sound of this region, and with the audio guide enabled, the title of the touched region is red. Pond. Farmhouse. This allows to quickly explore the image and to Stable. discover all of its parts. Sky. After the title, a more detailed description starts. The sky is particularly atmospheric in the upper right corner of the painting. A soft blue turns into soft beige shades. In addition, there are five buttons on the screen for descriptions concerning the whole artwork. For instance, one is about the artist, two is about the artwork, and three other texts may give additional interesting stories. The artist Peter Bruegel the Elder Very little about the life of Peter Bruegel the Elder has been documented. The descriptions can be improved with visual content. For instance, we can animate different parts of the painting to help tell its story. To accomplish this, the image is segmented into many different layers that can be animated. Missing backgrounds need to be completed. Here we show the head falling down into the river, which helped, for instance, people with cognitive impairments to interpret the head which is painted in mid-air. We can also zoom into the painting to highlight smaller details, or use videos and animations to make descriptions easier to understand. The Tactile Multimedia Guide features many accessibility options. The audio guide, soundscape and animations can each be turned on and off. Descriptions are available as audio, and a sign language Girl videos upside. for deaf people. In addition, the descriptions can be read either with synchronized subtitles or as a full text display on the screen. All content is available in different languages and always with an easy language version that is easier to understand, for example, for people with intellectual impairments or for children.
The user can change the colors of the interface and the speed of the text. As there are so many options, these settings can also be stored as QR codes. The built-in camera detects them and quickly sets the stored preferences. Finally, the Tactile Multimedia Guide can be used with multiple reliefs, which can be quickly exchanged in the frame. The kiosk can be installed in a museum, or we have a mobile version that can be quickly set up at any location. Yeah, so this um, is one of the technologies, the Tactile Multimedia Guide. Oh, I have my own power, right? <laughs> Can you imagine what it would be like if you... Okay, so uh, now I'll present Philip, the other technology that we are using um, for the service delivery. Can you imagine what it would be like if you could easily access museums and galleries all over the world? right from your home or hometown? Can you imagine being able to enjoy exploring paintings and sculptures, even if you can't see them? Can you imagine being able to experience art with all your senses and learn about what interests you? Now it is possible. Felix's patented technology, originally developed for the blind and visually impaired, has been upgraded with features that allow a better user experience for the elderly, including those who otherwise have difficulty using digital technology as part of the Boku project and with the help of end users. The innovative Felif product works on the basis of vibrations, speech, realistic sounds, images, and tactile relief overlay. It allows you to produce and explore creative and inclusive digital content on a touch screen. It is easy and fun to use, but above all, it opens up a new world of emotions. The arch above the window. On the cross, which is part of the loom, is hung woven horsehair cloth of various patterns. The horsehair cloth was sometimes used in the manufacture of clothing, collars, and top the cross. On the cross, weaving looms in which the men wove. Bunches of horsehair are hanged on a part of the loom. Horsehair was... Feel it. Feel the future. So yeah, um, I was able to introduce to you just uh, two of the technologies, but in total there are five of them. Um, it's not that we uh, developed something new. They were existing technologies. They are just being adapted uh, and connected together to serve to our service delivery models. So aside Philip uh, and um, the multimedia um, uh, guide that you saw that is from uh, VRVIS, which is the Austria's leading institute uh, for research in visual computing. Uh, we have NUS Digital, the one that is connected to the screen um, uh, 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 guide. Uh, and Optivit, which uh, is from the Austrian Institute of Technology that offers a system designed to enhance videos and images for individuals with age-related visual impairments. And then, of course, we have SignTime, another Austrian company that uh, they specialize uh, in facilitating communication, uh, so with the sign language. And SignTime is um, connected to the, the screen solution in the, um, as I explained to you before, it will be an avatar doing the sign language also um, um, for, for uh, additional explanation. In terms of quality characteristics for the, for the architecture of the Boku, we look into accessibility. As I told you, uh, uh, we are focused uh, with a special target in visual and hearing impairments. Um, it, it has an international component because the solutions will be in six languages. Um, we um, look into design language uh, regarding appearance and the scalability, and of course, uh, because it's um, um, uh, you, we, we are moving the applications um, to the web, and we we, we are giving um, so it will be accessible to 95% of all mobile devices uh, because we are using Chrome and Google and Safari and Apple, which are not my field, and that's why I can't explain you <laughs> best. So. Just remember, uh, and uh, like to take away here, it's uh, the importance that we are really co-designing 
and developing and evaluating the solutions with the target group. Now, uh, you understood that, thank you. I have five minutes, I have to be quick. So you understood that primary target group here are the elderly citizens, but our other target groups here are uh, the cultural institutions, so the museums, et cetera, uh, they are decision makers and the, the, the touristic guides and, and the museum guides. And on the other side, we have also uh, institutions like daycare centers, healthcare centers, so social care centers where elderly citizens live. Um, and in the co-design process, uh, where we first you, uh, included the, the end users, there were the elderly citizens together with the staff of museum and institutions co-designing um, um, what we, we what we are uh, about to um, deliver as service delivery model, uh, and um, so those technologies they are existing we are just playing with them by taking in uh, into account what this target group the elderly citizen need and by co-creating uh, uh with them um and we believe that we are serving also uh you know some new democratization standards here uh and the project employs a mixed methodology that combines reflective hands-on activities um uh, generative and testing methods as, as you will see also in the future. So last year, uh, we um, organized these co-design workshops in Austria, Italy, Slovenia, Switzerland, and Portugal in order to involve, as I said, the elderly citizens and the museum staff, and they, they, we call them application partners because they will be using this in the future uh, in the design of the service delivery model. Uh, the Participatory approach uh, allows us to design these SDMs based on the needs and the preferences of the elderly citizens. So what happened there is that there were many ideas, um, scenarios generated during the co-creation workshops, uh, and then we further specified them, integrated and categorized them uh, based on common characteristics. And then we had uh, uh, 12 scenarios, uh, descriptions, um, of these three future um, services, uh, which we categorized under culture of proximity, distributed museums, performing objects, heritage regeneration. Uh, and finally, we have the, um, the SDMs that are, uh, we choose, so finally five scenarios, the virtual guided tour, the multisensory stimulation lab, the traveling backpack, tactile interactive postcards, and the storytelling lab, which are then grouped into three service delivery uh, models. So, um, yeah, um, again, we believe that these uh, service delivery models uh, will, you know, have an uh, impact in improving the quality of life. Uh, of course, the uh, in uh, ensuring um, inclusive uh, cultural experiences. Uh, and develop the age tech group, uh, the age tech sector in Europe by providing some best practices on how to integrate, advance, and scale up both products and services tailored to the diverse um, needs of the aging population. So, um, yeah, so the to for you to understand after the co-design process, uh, our technology partners take in consideration the results and improve continuously. And um, what will happen next and actually started this year is the evaluation process, which is divided in, into two parts, is the iterative evaluation activity. Uh, and we call it the demonstration phase. Uh, and here we uh, are included actually in the project is that again, we include primary and secondary end users, which are the museum staff and the elderly, but we have included also the um, tertiary end users, which are these museum and institution decision makers that are supposed to be the future clients of, of our uh, service delivery models. Uh, and the validation phase will happen uh, in 2024, uh, where we actually, uh, uh, so now we are producing prototypes and the validation phase next year will be telling us 
uh, what happened uh, and which ones do survive because after this project they are going to be market products so everybody will be able uh, these application partners like museums or institutions will be able um, to access this as a uh, as products um, so we are hoping that we will offer a complete solution for the cultural institutions to create custom-made, accessible, and unique experiences for older um, adults. So although they are three service delivery models, the bag, the box, and the screen, they uh, have the option to be um, uh, customized um, and, uh, you know, adding options uh, in the future. So in terms of evaluation, we are focusing, um, uh, so evaluating with all the end users is in total with 200 participants. Uh, the aspects on the uh, on the well-being, uh, um, so quality of social interaction, self-esteem, uh, level of meaningful activation um, with the primary end users, so with the elderly citizens. And we are evaluating our technology design uh, with both primary and secondary end users, which are the museum um, uh, people, because they are going to use the technology. So the uh, elderly citizens are going to use the technology uh, to experience, but also the museum guides to develop and also to demonstrate to elderly citizens. And here we are looking to user experience and usability, the accessibility, of course, the usefulness, the, um, the intention of use uh, and the user satisfaction. So in each phase of this iterative evaluation, so this year we have, we will repeat them, we improve the technologies and the solutions. And regarding the, the business aspects, we are evaluating the stakeholder interest. So their general perception uh, of these three uh, solutions, the market potential, we are evaluating how much would they like to pay and if it's possible to pay. Um, uh, and the overall acceptance. Um, and we, in this, so in this project, we are with the partners that I mentioned to you uh, in different countries, but we have also museums uh, and the cultural institutions, different ones in each um, uh, partner country are really um, with us in this phase, uh, not as a project partner, but as an interested um, a partner through their letter of intent that they wrote at the beginning. So um, I don't have too much results to show today, you know, in terms of, uh, let's say, a scientific, but I just wanted to give you an overview of um, uh, about the Boku solutions. I hope it was clear. Uh, I don't know how many minutes I have um, left, zero, of course. So approach me if you have any uh, questions. Here are our contacts. Andrea Sackel, which is the, uh, the project manager uh, from the leading uh, partner. Uh, and please visit the Boku project website. I gave some leaflets to you. You can subscribe to our newsletter and see how it goes on. So thank you very much. I hope I was clear somehow <laughs> with this um, presentation. Thank you.